this is the book Milan, uh, How the Blue Streak Broke the World Speed Record, a fascinating and worthwhile reminder of those glorious days when Britain ruled the rails. Wow, nice. It's written by Don Hale. Here it says Aurum Publishers, Aurum Press, .co.uk, eight pounds, close to I believe six forty bucks. Um, you can see here. So this is this uh, train. I think it was A4 class. Uh, with the streamlined body because it wanted to high speeds it, it is like a normal steam engine but they put this uh, fairing on top of it and let's see it was it is print uh, it, it looks okay right even though there are some dents and all but it looks pretty good for 225 bucks especially when you <laughs> see that it, it is available for 48,000 bucks so it is printed on 2008 11 years old and good total number of pages around the readable number i'd say close to let me see it's around 166 pages and there is the center portion where you have this pics amazing pics of these things wow this is the book actually well wow. so let me read it and let me put the review so it's like uh, two days since I uh, unpacked my uh, the uh, Malad book. So uh, I just finished this book in two days. Usually I used to finish in, like, I could have finished it in one day, but you know, your work doesn't allow that. And uh, so I finished it. So instead of uh, giving just a rating, like, you know, what others do, like 3.5 out of 5 or something, I'm going to take you briefly through the table of contents and what each chapter tells about it and what I feel in the end about the book. So let's go by chapter by chapter. first chapter more of like a history it basically talks about uh, history of British Railways and uh, how a competition between various East and West Coast services uh, you know which ran uh, in different routes and they were just uh, competing each other who can reach the destination faster so and you know they were kind of talking about uh, reducing running times you know few funny examples were there what happened how the fa passengers felt no, a few accidents and also it is a kind of an introduction to a British Railways. So the chapter 2 is called Nigel Grizzly and the Great Northern. So it talks about Sir Nigel Grizzly who was the chief mechanical engineer of LNER. And it basically talks about his professional career and life till the development of A1 and A4 class locomotives. So the third chapter is called the London and North Eastern Railway LNER. So it talks about uh, First World War, how it affected the railways, and uh, what happened, and uh, the consolidation of various companies into basically four entities: LNER London and North Eastern Railway, and LMS London uh, Midland and uh, Scottish Railways, Great Western Railway, and Southern Railway. So how it got consolidated, and it talks about various uh, steam uh, locomotive developments uh, up to uh, the development of Flying Scotsman. This is where uh, things start getting interesting. It talks about the most iconic steam engine in the world, the Flying Scotsman. Uh, it talks not about, the, about that uh, locomotive, it talks about the train class, the Flying Scotsman. Also it talks about uh, the A1 locomotive development as a whole. And interestingly, the race between uh, you know, Great Western Railway's Castle you know, class uh, locomotive versus uh, LNER's uh, A1 Pacific class. Which Chapter 5 Development Cross Channel starts with a uh, personal tragedy of Sir Nigel Grizzly, you know, when his wife died, how he tried to cope up with that. Then it talks about development of compound locomotive number 10,000 uh, and talk, also talks about other developments uh, in the steam uh, locomotive, uh, especially on LNER. And uh, then, interestingly and importantly, it starts about it talks about the uh, start of a uh, race bet between German. Uh, oh, basically steam engine and the diesel log post and its European rivals so it talks about how Germans started you know after you know Hitler came into power how uh, they started uh, pushing for the you know, top speed record and uh, they challenged Europe so it talks about uh, the start of the rivalry between Germans and its European rivals chapter 6 is really important in this chapter uh, and it, it will also uh, 
to be interesting for automotive enthusiasts like car enthusiasts as well because it talks about how uh, Nigel Nigel Grisley uh, learned the art of streamlining from race cars, his his um, Bugatti factory visit, and how uh, Germany kept on pushing for you know, higher top speeds, and also. Uh, Nigel, uh, Sir Nigel Grisley travels on uh, a diesel uh, locomotive, German like uh, diesel locomotive called a uh, Flying Hamburger, and he comes back very much uh, impressed by it. So this is a, a mix of automotive uh, history of Bugatti and other sports car, and how Sir uh, Nigel Grisley learned the art of streamlining because Mallard is a streamlined locomotive, and how he learned how how he can convert uh, a brick like locomotive into much more streamlined so that he can achieve higher top speeds. Chapter 7, as the name suggests, uh, talks about various efforts by various uh, locomotive uh, firms across Europe, uh, in Germany as well as in Britain, how they were trying to increase the speed, uh, push for higher top speeds. Then now come to this center area where, where, where there are various photographs about Sir Nigel Grisley and uh, various locomotives, P2 class, uh, it talks about Hush Hush, this is the 10,000 one, I know, I was talking about the locomotive. Then, Bugatti car and it talks about the flying hamburger, the, one of the fastest uh, diesel. It achieved 124 miles per hour in the test. Then talks about the flying Scotsman, iconic. Uh, then the picture of uh, William Stanier, you know, who's a good friend of Grizzly and was the chief mechanical of uh, mechanical engineer, CME of LMS. You can see uh, William Stanier's again, coronation plus. And then Silver Fox, there is his own uh, uh, locomotive which is named after himself, like Sir Nigel Grisley. Chapter 8 uh, talks about you know how Germans were pushing for higher speeds, testing with uh, locos like 0 uh, 0.5.002 and 001 versions, speed trials, and also talks about LNER's test runs uh, uh, with locomotives named Coronation, Golden Jubilee, Golden uh, Shuttle, something like that. And it talks about how Germans reached a top speed of 124.5 miles per hour. In this chapter, we come back uh, to the, uh, the competition between LMS and LNER. How uh, LMS was trying to you know increase average speed, and they were like doing a surprise test with passengers and you know guys, and how the cutleries were flying all over the place when they tried to achieve the top speed. It was really interesting, and talks about you know uh, war brewing in Germany and how Nazi propaganda machinery was trying to you know uh, use uh, locomotives as a as a as a scale of development. This is one of the most important chapters before the final chapter where you know the top speed is achieved talks about preparations you know how to improve a4 class uh, for a better top speed and how the tests were done how the performance was analyzed and you know how various uh, team players were helping to reach that you know for that slight advantage so that they can reach a better top speed and it, it talks a lot about people's experience you know how uh, uh, sir Najik Resli was pushing for pushing them for uh, better efficiency and top speed then we come to the the final chapter which is basically uh, the day of reckoning where you know not final chapter this is the most important chapter where you know how uh, how it, it explains in detail how uh, they prepared and the day of testing you know how from morning onwards how things went and uh, like uh, how how many trial runs were done what happened when they were trying to achieve the top speed and till the uh, how it reached 126 miles per hour so the final chapter talks about uh, how uh, British people, you know, reacted to the the, uh, the speed record and what happened to uh, Mallard after that, how it was preserved and it talks about what happened to Sir Nigel Grisley after that. It's kind of a conclusion chapter. So coming back to my final uh, opinion, if, if you guys ask whether I liked it, I really liked it. So this is a collector's item if you are, you know, an railway enthusiast. And not only railway enthusiasts, if you like about automotives, you know, anything that moves mechanically, this is a must-have book. Because within, uh, within 166 pages, it explains about the history of uh, British railways and competition within Britain and competition with Germany. And especially, it talks about Sir Nigel Grisley, how, how, how he uh, led to this achievement. And it talks about various, uh, various automotive, uh, not automotive, uh, steam engine classes. 
but at times i felt it was slightly boring at times because it, it has got this back and forth uh movement of you know uh, it moves from uh, it talks about one thing then suddenly it moves to some other area then uh, you know some personal issues of sir nigel grizzly was discussed then talks about various characters there at that area i feel it's slightly slower not boring i'd say sorry for that but it's slightly slower but other than that when the test comes and when it talks about technical uh, features of the train how they were testing it 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 window into a foregone era of steam engines and how daring the people were and how they were pushing for a uh, better speed by pushing the outside of the technology envelope so this is a really really good book and i really suggest that i definitely suggest that uh, you should you guys should be buying it so i will leave the uh, link in the description Uh, about uh, uh, this book where you can get it you can get it in amazon and uh, if you guys are interested just go ahead and purchase you guys won't be disappointed so thanks for watching this video uh, please like and subscribe to my channel and please leave your suggestions in the description i'll uh, in, in the comment section i will definitely work on it and try to improve uh, uh, my quality of video and if you guys want anything any books or anything i need to be reviewed please uh, leave the message i'll try to do it as early as possible Thank <laughs> you.